for today comes from Romans 6 verses 1b through 11. A reading from Romans. Paul writes, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy, holy, holy. My heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, You are holy God. 
Gospel of St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the 12 disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. But nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell it in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his, her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Oh, no. 
of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our collective hearts. Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Here we are, Lord, at your feet, Lord. Our souls look up to thee. Make our thoughts, Lord, and my tongue, Lord, acceptable to thee. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you on today. We thank you for another day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this time that we are together in worship to honor you, to celebrate you, to praise you, to lift your name on high. Because indeed you have been a wonderful God. Lord, we just say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you've done. And we just want to lift you up to acclaim you and to worship you wherever we may be. Lord, it is now time that we come to hear your word. We pray that you remove every distraction, every hindrance, and we'll try to get in the way to hear which to, to us to hear what you have to say to us. Father, we pray that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. That when we pray, we pray when it is all said and done, we may be edified. The devil and his demons be horrified. But most of all, you be glorified. And we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the people of the Lord said, Amen, Amen. And amen. people of God, please turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. 
Again, that's Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. Once more, that's Matthew 10, verses 37 through 39. We read it earlier, uh, but I want to read it again. Uh, I want to read it again for your reconsideration as uh, the sermon text for this morning. And here begins the reading of God's holy word. You can find it on the screen. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. People of God, for these next few fleeting moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, how bad do you want him? Lord, have mercy. How bad do you want him? How bad do you want him? People of God, today is the fourth Sunday after that great celebration of Pentecost. I wish you all a blessed Lord's Day. And now let's get into the word of the Lord. The sermon title. How bad do you want him? People of God, have you ever wanted something so badly that you made up in your mind that you were going to do whatever it took to get that something? Now, maybe it was a materialistic thing. Maybe it was a person. Yeah, Lord have mercy. Maybe it was a person. You made up in your mind whatever you could do. To get that particular thing, you were going to get it. And as uh, uh, young children, and we, we do this, and even as a, adults, people do this, uh, teenagers do this, all kinds of people do that, that they make up in their mind, they're going to do whatever they can to get that certain thing. Uh, some people, uh, uh, people, adults and some and, and some teenagers, if they want to get a car, they work for that, they want to buy their, their first car, they want uh, whatever, they want to have their first paycheck so they can do whatever they want to do. But they made up in their mind that they really want something so that they're going to work as hard as they can to get it. As a child, like a child does, a child, when they want something from their parent, they try to do whatever they can to make that parent happy uh, so they can give what they want. And if one parent doesn't say yes, they go to the other parent and, and, and try to give whatever they and try to give what they want. So it is, it is, it, how bad do you want? It? Lord have mercy. And a lot of us want a lot of things badly, so we do whatever we can to do it. But the problem with that is, people, of God. A lot of us want things that we don't need to have, but we want it bad. It's called flesh operated. It's, and spirit and flesh are constantly operating against each other. The flesh cannot please God. But how bad do you want him? Not it. Him. And that is the Lord Jesus himself. People of God. In our text today from Matthew 10, Jesus is talking to his 12 selected disciples. He selected these 12 men who we probably wouldn't choose. They weren't the best of men. They, uh, they, they, they weren't high up in rank. They lived some interesting lifestyles. But Jesus chose these men. Peter was a cussing fisherman. Matthew was a tax collector. So it, it, he chose these men. They weren't ordinary. But he chose them. They weren't, they, he didn't get them from the palace. No, no. Why would you want a tax collector, a thief? Why would you want a cussing fisherman? Why? Because when he was going to get through with them, nobody but him was going to get the glory. People of God, Jesus, as Jesus is talking to his disciples, we find a little bit before where our sermon text begins in, in Matthew 10, verse 17 to 23, Jesus starts talking about how his word and their preaching of it will bring division. People will not necessarily like them because they are preaching his word. Jesus says that their belief of him will even cause division in their own home. Jesus tells his 12 disciples as he calls them out, as he, as he, as he sends them in mission through his work, he tells them that because they are following him, there's going to, it's, it's going to be some interesting things happening. People will not like them. It will be division. People will not like them. People will run the other way when they see them. Uh, and, and, and not only will the outside world, people that are, people that they are not even blood related to are, are, are going to, are going to not like them. Now you probably can get, you could probably can get over that one. But Jesus tells them that even their own family members wouldn't hate them 
because of their faith in the Lord. Jesus says right before our sermon text begins today in Matthew 10 verse 34 to 36. He says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth, but I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Jesus says, because you believe in me, it'll even cause division in your own house. It's not just the outside world. Even your own family members ain't going to like you. Jesus. Because you believe in the Lord. Because you believe that he alone is Savior. There is no other name under the heaven by which men must. He said, because you believe that, you will even have foes in your own house. Because you want to do it the way God put it. And because you want to follow in the way of Jesus Christ. Because you want to do that, you will be hated not only by the outside world, but even those in your house. Jesus warns his disciples of that. Then Jesus says, where our sermon text begins today. Jesus says those words, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, read that carefully. Jesus is not saying don't love your mother or your father. For he knows the fifth of the Ten Commandments. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He knows that. He knows that commandment. He's God in the flesh. He knows that. But he was there when, when it was given. Given because he's a part of the Godhead. So Jesus knows that commandment. He, he knows that commandment. He says, he says, do not love your father or your mother more than me. And do not love your son or your daughter more than me. It's nothing wrong with loving your, 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 your parents. It's nothing wrong with loving your, your children. God wants you to do that. He wants unity and love in the household. But he says, you can't love them more than me. You can't follow him and love him and then put somebody else where only he belongs. How bad do you want him? Lord have mercy. Do, do, do you want him so bad that you're willing to love him more than every other person in your life? I, I know you, you're, you're, you're important in my life. I love you. So, I love you so much. I love I really do love you. I, whoever, wherever you are right now, I love you. I, I love you. I love you. I love you because we're all God's children. I love you. But nobody can take the place of our God. Do you want him so badly that you will put him first? Not second. Not third, not fourth. No, I, I, I want him right where he belongs. David said it like this. I keep the Lord always before me. Stop taking him out of where he belongs and putting somebody else up in there. It becomes idolatry. He says, if you love your father or your mother more than me, or if you love your son or your daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of me. If you love them, more than, and how do I figure that out? When it comes to them or God, you choose them. When it comes, now, when it comes to what God said versus that, now it doesn't mean don't honor your parents, don't love your children, but it means that God has to be first. And if God is first, everything else go line up. If I love God first, loving God gives me the ability to love my mother, my father, my, uh, uh, my, my sister, my brother, my daughter, my son. It allows me to do that if I love him first. If I place him first, everything else go line up. He says, you should love me. And Jesus reiterated this in Matthew 22, verse, 30, uh, verse 36 to 38. When the disciples asked Jesus, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. This is an, this is an Old Testament, and Jesus reiterated it. That's the greatest commandment. If you, this is the first, if you do this first, everything else going to line up. 
And then the second is love your neighbor as yourself. So it's not that God doesn't want you to love your neighbor. It's that he wants you to love him. That putting him first will make everything go well. And then he says in verse 38, Matthew 10, 38, And he that taketh not his cross, Lord have mercy, and followeth after me is not worthy. Now what does that mean? When a person took a cross in Jesus' day, it was for one reason. And that reason was to die. So when somebody was taking up a cross, it was to die. So when Jesus says that if you do not take up your cross and follow him, you're not worthy of him. Jesus says in order to follow him, you must die. Now, now, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Does he mean that I have to literally die? No. He says that I have an order for me to die. I have to let go of my own agenda and my self-oriented ways and I have to surrender myself to the will of God. See, I already lost somebody because we like it our way. If it's not our way, it ain't right. Lord, have we don't listen to nobody but us. If it's not our way, it ain't right. But he said, if, if you do not take up your cross, if you do not die to yourself and follow me, our reading from Romans put it this way. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be. Come on. Our old man is crucified. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Why are you still living over that when you should be free? I do not want to be saved and still walk in that mess. Why would you want to? Why would you want to go back to what God saved you from? Lord have mercy. Why are you still serving sin when you should be serving God? And whoever sinned is a slave to sin. Why would you keep going over there to that mess? For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead is free from sin. If I'm dead, that means I'm dead to my old self. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the old has passed away and the new has come. That's what happens when you become saved. You have to say, Lord, take this old self and, I, I, and I'm putting it on the cross with you. And I want the resurrection of my spirit, the resurrection of my godly life. I, 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 want, I, I want to have a godly life. I want to, my spirit to rise up and my flesh to die. That's what it means. You have to die to yourself if you want to follow him. If not, you can't follow, you can't follow the Lord and not die to yourself. So we already learned a few things. You can't, you, you can't follow the Lord and still, and still, and, and, and love other people, or, and, and love other people who only his love should be. You can't, you, you can't love other people more than him. And you also can't follow your own agenda and still follow him. And then finally, in the last verse. Jesus says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Those who will not die to self are not worthy of him. You can't be saved and not die to your own agenda. He that findeth his life shall lose it. That means that you're trying to get worldly achievements or you're trying to follow your own way. He that finds his life will lose. In other words, you're trying to go, you're trying to, you're trying to walk in your old self. Trying to walk in your old, you're trying to walk in your old self, trying to walk in your old ways, trying to do it your way. You that you, you that want to do it your own way, that's what that means. You're gonna lose your life. The only the only gratification you're gonna get is on this earth. The only reward you're gonna get is on this earth. You will not get a reward in heaven. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find. Do you want eternal life? That's what that means. If you lose your a way of a thinking, your way of agenda, and you say, Lord, lead me, and wherever you tell me, I'm going to go, then you have eternal life. Because that shows real commitment. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Are you willing to die to your own agenda, to your own plan, and yield to the Lord? How bad do you want it? Do you want them that bad that you're going to deny self and follow him? If any man will come after me, this is just what Jesus said. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. 
You can't follow him and still love others more than you love him. You can't follow him and he be second and second he be second and not first or third and not first or somebody else somebody else is first where only he should be. We praise people more than we praise God because of we we give people more accolades than we give to God. And if you love if you love others more than him, you're not worthy of him. And if you don't deny yourself, you're not worthy of him. And not worthy of him means you you, you can't you, you can't follow him if you're still twisted into that twisted into that thinking that you can love others more than him and thinking that you can just you can just go and do what you want and not follow what he has for your life. No, don't get me wrong. You're gonna make mistakes, but your goal and your heart, your desire is to follow him. James four seven says, "Submit yourself therefore to God." Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I don't know about you, but I I want it. I want it. More than I want anything else, I want the Lord. More than I want anything else, I want the Lord. And when I want him, when I choose him, he will lead me in the right direction. For I heard, I heard Job say, he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I'll come forth as gold. You need to know that. That no matter what you're going through in your life, he sees you, he knows you, and, and, he, and he sees how bad you want him. He sees your heart's desire that you really want him. And I'm telling you, as, it, as time goes past, you'll see that as you reach, as you just reach out, and if, you just keep, if you just keep getting closer, and he'll get close to you if you get closer to him. If you keep getting closer, if you just keep drawing nigh to him, you'll find that life will get so much easier. And that doesn't mean you're going to have some hard, hard situations. But when you get to the hard situations, you know where to go. When your heart is overwhelmed, you've got a rock that you can go to. Stand on that rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. People of God, stand firm in this. question is, how bad do you want him? Do you want him as much to put him first? To deny yourself and to lose your way of your, your way of agenda, your way of thinking, and put on the mindset of Christ. How bad do you want him? But he wanted you so bad that he died for you on that old rugged cross. He says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. Yes, he wanted you. He wanted you bad. So he now opens the invitation and says, Come forth. I died for you. I want you now. And your response is, Lord, I want you to. Is that your response? I want you to. How bad do you want it? God bless you. I am thy Lord. I have heard thy voice and it's but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
as it's up to us at peace with our neighbors, even when we're annoyed and angry with them. Help us to care for one another, even when we're stressed out and stretched thin. And help us to forgive each other, even when that seems hard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our President Joe Biden, for our Vice President Kamala Harris and their families, and all of those who hold authority in our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, deliver from evil all who risk their lives in defense of life and liberty. Guide them in pathways of righteousness. Heal them when they are wounded in body, mind, or spirit. Return them safely to their families and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bring health and gladness to all whose lives are shadowed by pain, suffering, or sorrow. We name them silently, online, or alive. their light and life, their guide and joy. Raise them up from the dark valleys in which they wander. Give compassion, gentleness, and patience to all who care for them. And shelter them always with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our beloved dead into your care. Hold them in the palm of your hand. Keep us firm in faith and constant in affection. Command your holy angels to shield us from the evil ones flaming darts. And by the cross of your beloved son, lead us safely into your presence. There with all whom you have redeemed and raised up, crap that we may delight in praising your goodness and mercy forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, dear Father, as they touch your heart through the Spirit who searches our hearts for the sake of your beloved Son. Answer them as may be best for us and give you glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. People of God, we share that peace virtually with one another. Peace. With you. People of God, at this time I bring forth a few announcements. First of all, we thank God. I know I thank God. I hope you do as well because God has been good to us. He's been wonderful. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. He's been an awesome God. And so I, I thank God for his goodness and I hope that I hope we can be on one accord and thank God for everything that he's done. For he's an awesome God and we praise him. And I don't know if you can get testimonies like mine, but I'm not looking for another one. Amen. I thank God for our God. Amen. There is none like him. And so we praise the Lord. Amen. People of God, I also thank God for you. I thank God for your support, your words of encouragement, whatever you have done to help along the way. Just the fact that you're watching this service right now is a means of support. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Sharing the videos, whatever you've done along the way to, to, uh, to help this ministry, to help me, to encourage me, to support me. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do not take it for granted. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen and amen. People of God, just a few brief announcements. We have our regular schedule this week. We have Bible study on Tuesday at 7.30. We have a prayer on Friday at 7.30. And we have Sunday morning worship on Sunday at 10 a.m. for the first Sunday in the month of July. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, so the next time we'll be together is Tuesday at 7.30, and we praise the Lord for that. Now, God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer, and it should be all of our prayers. And at this time, let's keep going with the service. Amen? Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. People of God, go and tell it. When it's hard, when it's joyous, when it's inconvenient, when it's healing, go tell the good news of the light in the light. And remember that you do not go alone. We are children of the Most High God. Knowing this, may I try you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings fall. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.